everybody thanks for watching and just a quick reminder that time the new dvd is now available download as well um i want to get into this uh video to really answer questions on you know really programming the mind and we talked about this before in meditation but um it's something i want to go into a little bit more and um just talk about a lot of things that's um upcoming things that we we have been seeing lately and um mostly you know these things just really fit into everything that we have been experiencing as far as this whole attack on consciousness so to really get people to to understand and believe uh what's happening is um to really go back and I always like to go back into uh, the history and um really look at things and see how those things brought us to where we are today so since we all understand it has been basically this oppression of african-american people and have videos where we take it all the way back to the 60s with integration and everything that happened with that and we have to look at what has to happen for you to get a people to become something that you want them to become something that they are not so for us it was them it was for them to really get us to change our consciousness change our appearance and who we are our name you know and we we were perceived in the 60s the 70s 50s even and everything as people who were just trying to get ahead after coming out of you know slavery a depression you know, and so many other things we had to endure as African-American people. And we was just a people really looking for equality. We marched on that. And to anybody with a heart, any good person, you could look at the plight of African-American people and resonate with it and, you know, and see us as a good people. And for the most part, that was happening. It was happening around the world. You had a lot of people who were speaking up about it. I showed the picture with Einstein when he came uh, to America and was teaching at a, a HBCU. And um, people were really understanding what we were trying to accomplish. And uh, we were at that time really just trying to fit in, you know, and um, really get white America to see us as humans. And as I talk about, you know, after everything we endured with slavery, uh, Jim Crow and everything. By the 1980s, we was closing the wealth gap between us and white America. That was a big deal. So you have to understand how, again, of course, we know they wouldn't allow that to happen. And I uh, got into hip hop and everything we receive, uh, the crack epidemic and all the pieces that was put in place to change our consciousness. And you can see at that point in time, because people act like they don't see when it happened. We can see from the 80s on there was a consciousness shift from a people who were up and coming to a destructive people whose whole image has been corrupted and changed into a people that is lost, a people that is violent, a people that is not intelligent, a people that is lazy. And this is what happened to us. We went from a up and coming strong black people who was proud, who was understanding where we came from in our culture and understanding we came from Africa. And, you know, when you start to go back and look at the 70s and a whole revolution, a movement and um, how that was dismantled, you know, you start seeing the TV shows, start seeing it in that and in movies and how they would mock and uh, basically make fun of any black people or black person that was talking about black power. I mean, we can go back to the movie, I'm Going to Get You Sucker. I was just watching it not too long ago. I'm Going to Get You Sucker. You remember you had Clarence Williams, the third character, who was preaching black power and everything like that. And, you know, he was with the white woman. And um, same thing, if you remember episode of Sanford and Son, where Lamont became conscious. They made him look like he was tripping, like he was like on something. Like uh, he was just tripping about this black culture. And you start to see things like that, you know, and, uh, from mainstream media. That was basically, you know, uh, making the conscious African look like a crazy person. Now, we all talk about, you know, people being brainwashed and uh, people being crazy. And especially when we talk about being brainwashed, people don't really understand uh, how such a thing could happen. Like when we think about brainwashing, we think about an actual machine or person being, you know, forced into a situation where their brain is washed or where they uh, are forced to believe something that they don't want to believe. 
But, you know, we have to be real about the entire situation. If we're going to basically change the consciousness of an entire people, it has to be subtle. And these people are the masters that, you know, hide things in plain sight. So they use reverse psychology on us with uh, the whole hip hop uh, gangster rap era with N.W.A. and making us believe that, you know, the white man was saying that we cannot have this music. You know, N.W.A. was pushing the whole thing as if the white man saying we can't have it and that made us want it more. And we just saying, you know, we basically trying to talk about what's happening in the street, police brutality and what's really going on. And we wasn't understanding that this was a Trojan horse to get us to ask for our own destruction, which is what we did. And as I talked about before, you had only C. Dolores Tucker and uh, basically a bunch of people that was following her. The only people that was really seeing what was happening and speaking out against it. So this is the first step in beginning to change the consciousness of African-American people with the music. When you understand, as I talk about how powerful the music is and how it's influence, influencing us. So for us, we got to really just be real with ourselves to understand that there is a direct connection between our music and our consciousness, our music and the reality that we perceive today. You know, we can see how we had the gangster rap, the whole hip hop culture come in and basically destroy the black community that along with the crack epidemic a lot of people want to simply blame it on the crack epidemic but we got to look at the music that was promoting you know the drug dealing and the gang banging and everything like that this is a programming of consciousness it's a consciousness shift to where you have to understand how your brain works and how consciousness works and what was being programmed into us to really get us to see um you know what we wanted to see and not what we needed to see so we wanted to really see that the music was ours and it was good for us and that, um, you know, it was going to uplift us or what have you. But we really didn't see that um, it was really changing the minds of people and really getting them to act out what the music was displaying, uh, saying and, and everything like that. So this is what happened. There's a lot of people just want to act like it's no connection that. You know, just because you listen to gangster music don't mean that you are a bad person or you're going to kill people or what have you. But that's not for everybody. And in the cases that we see, we know for sure that that's a fact, that these people were influenced by drugs, the music, the culture to do what they have been doing. And we were seeing the direct connection, plain and simple. So I talked about this before, how it started off small and primitive with us just, you know, simply changing our words you know from saying that bad is good that's bad you know because this was the the only way they can get us in the beginning it was just they couldn't really comprehend you know a better way to start this thing off so we started off with stupid stuff like saying that's dope which dope is like a bad thing bad that's a bad thing we was changing we was taking bad words and making them good small and we being creative as we are, you know, just developed it. And just now we created what they call jive. Remember, it was called jive. You jive turkey, you talking jive, jive talk, hood talk, slang. And it developed or what have you to where we're speaking bad things. Words is power. They understood that. We didn't. We're speaking negative things daily, you know, putting it out into our consciousness you know, speaking to each other and passing this bad, you know, consciousness around and it just spread and spread. And it was the programming of our consciousness to accept, you know, our destruction and so on and so forth. We've seen it go from crack epidemic, hip hop to everything we've been seeing to we went from in the 80s, closing the wealth gap between us and white America to being in devastation, you know. Poverty, crack, violence, completely destroy our neighborhoods, our image, and everything we was trying to be, everything that we fought for to get to that point, to be leading in many categories, to have so many black people owning businesses and going to college and doing well, to the numbers just drastic drop off. The only difference, which is why we have to look at these things, crack epidemic, gangster music 
and we don't want to make that connection. The crack, we understand it's bad, but the hip hop music, we don't want to let go. And it's an even bigger drug than crack itself. So that was the programming. That was the programming right there. You know, all of our leaders were assassinated, dead and gone. The other ones was bought off. And then now we had a bunch of false leaders and um, nobody to really lead African-American people, black people to to tell us, you know, this is the right way to go. That was done. And it's the first thing you do when you're trying to basically infiltrate the people and control them. You have to get rid of the leaders and the ones you can't buy off. You have to kill. So that was out the way. So now we are left open. Nobody's really there to um, give us direction. So there is no programming of the consciousness from a good source. So they stepped in and took over, you know, with that whole process and gave us our destruction. So the programming we've been following has been the culture that was given to us, which is this hip hop culture. There has been nothing else. Before we had the Civil Rights March, we had Black Power, we had Black Panthers, we had this unity that was in our consciousness that we was following. And we could see it in the 70s. You could see it on television. You could see it everywhere with people with the Black Power fist and people just really into Black Power and Black economics and building and growing. You know, that was changed. They brought up the TV companies, they brought up the radio stations that Black people had and owned. And they, they condensed everything into a situation where anything that could be used to grow consciousness, to spread a message, they owned it. Media, newspaper, what have you, so that we can never go into a situation where we can appeal and speak to the masses of our people uh, and have control over it, full control. You know, and this is why, you know, my whole thing about YouTube and even though you see, I mean, you, you have to be careful now the way you word videos and, and what you put up, because now they're trying to hit us with, as I showed you guys, with um, age restrictions, saying that your video is age restricted and stuff like that. So the last facet of freedom to really put out information to our people, which is, you know, YouTube, the Internet, is being slowly taken away and it's going to be gone soon. And um this is something that we've seen coming. They're going to get everything, you know, anything that's going to be able to get us to to really pass around knowledge and grow. And then now they so they have so much confidence in the system and, you know, the, the control that's happening with this culture. You know, they, they just letting stuff go now because it's that much stronger than ever to control anything they put up. We follow, you know, they just, you know controlling us so that's what it was you know we had all that stuff come and go and then you have the change of, of our consciousness into their favor for us to be going the direction they wanted us to go and we changed as a people you know we went from being united to us being about ourselves and to us being about fitting in with the culture and when i'm talking about programming your consciousness is to program your consciousness against that very thing to see what it really is and to make sure that the way you are moving in your life is not, you know, it's not towards the programming and, and because of the programming. A lot of things we do is because we have been programmed to do it. And um, with meditation and getting into meditation and programming yourself to follow what, what you want to do, where you want to be at. That's this is what I'm talking about in meditation. This is what I mean when I'm talking about programming the subconscious, because we see what they have given us with this culture and everything else. And um, we are not the ones that is putting that information into our consciousness than who is. It is wide open 24 seven, 365. Your consciousness is open and music the most powerful way to put stuff in it movies powerful way to put stuff in it television or what have you and this is these are things that you're going to be subject subjected to in this culture and they understand that so it's like an advertisement slot if you know a bunch of people is going to be here you better come and try to sell some stuff you better come and try to advertise to all these people because they're going to be there so it's the same thing with music and television since they know you're going to watch and you're going to listen let's give them the message let's program them 
And if you're not conscious of that, you're going to fall victim to it. And I see a lot of so-called conscious people struggling with it, trying to be conscious. And then, you know, they can't help but jump into the programming, you know, the, the culture. So, again, if you're not programming yourself to follow your own plan, to be your own person, your own boss, to do what you want to do, you're going to be programmed to follow what they want you to do. And this is exactly what has happened to us and what we are doing. So uh, to really get into it, you know, you have you have one thing in between your physical body and your consciousness, and that's energy. As I talked about in meditation one, you have consciousness, basically sending energy to the brain and causing the body to animate, to react, or what have you. So if you are messing with the go-between, which is the energy, manipulating that, which it goes to the brain first, then you can control the person. So what's happening is we are, of course, receiving this music in uh, movies, TV, or what have you, and processing it, of course, in the brain, and it basically changing our consciousness to get us to act. So if you think about it in the sense of, you know, if there's a thought that occurs before movement and that thought is an energy and whatever that thought is, is going to push your physical body, your movement towards that whatever. Then imagine if you can interject, you know, off consciousness to allow your body, your very movement to move towards that programming. And this is what we're doing. This is what we have been programmed to do. Only we believe it's you because it is you. And, and when you do something and you've done it and it's about you and it's private or what have you, and you think it's your own thought and your own emotion and feeling, you have absolutely no clue. You've been programmed to do it. That's programming. Now, they have been programming us in slavery, you know, with the Bible, religion, seeing the white man as God, as this authoritative figure, as being smarter and better than us. And imagine, you know, it's sad when you go back and look at the history. And, um, you know, Bill Cosby did a special when he was just talking about how black people was trying to fit in, how we was dyeing our hair and, you know, straightening our hair, putting perms in our hair, making our hair straight to fit in with white folks, dressing like them, talking like them. And everything we could do to appease them and fit in. And, you know, we couldn't even get that. And uh, we in our, you know, exile, you might as well say, you know, we came together as people and um, began to understand who we are and begin to build and understand uh, economics and begin to grow and uh, have companies and uh good economics and businesses and as i talked about before it wasn't like people say it is in the 60s and the 50s and 60s we had companies we had businesses we had education that's a fact and uh it would have spread and we would have been way better off had we stayed on our own and uh made them come to us with respect before we was forced to join with them and be treated the way we was treated